Memphis kind of been the mecca for Tennessee for a lot of the health ills. We've got a predominantly minority population, underserved, where lots of people don't have insurance. So we're better than uh, Memphis to have a learning laboratory for a place like the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. We probably have a $2.3 billion economic impact on the economy of the state of Tennessee. So we're a huge economic engine for a lot of other things that aren't necessarily healthcare related. When I came here, you know, one of the things that struck me, Memphis hadn't gotten its fair share of the coffers of the University of Tennessee. We started to talk about that. We brought people from the General Assembly and the legislature to Memphis and asked them a very, very fundamental question. Do you want to be that state that has the worst medical school in the country? They took that challenge very, very serious and began to make a tremendous investment. And so we actually wrote a white paper a number of years ago that talked about this evolution from an incidental campus, meaning, you know, this copulation of things that had just kind of been thrown together, to a very, very intentional, deliberate kind of an enterprise where everything we do is predicated on a clearly defined strategy of the kinds of facilities that we need. And so, you know, our first approach was the academic facilities. And then we had to shore up our research facilities. You cannot have a robust research enterprise. You'll never compete in the top tier of institutions in NIH federal funding without new research facilities. So that was the second thing. Then we came back to look at the administrative space, faculty offices and those kinds of things. And so I would encourage anybody embarking on this kind of a mission that runs an institution like this, find the right partner. When we start looking at the whole security thing and really decided to, to up the ante, I really needed an organization that they're not on the cusp of trying to figure it out, feeling their way through the dark as some sort of an exercise. We've got a huge enterprise, you know, 60, 80 buildings, uh, HVAC systems, and all other kinds of complex things. Smart building technology. I want to embed that in my new construction. You know, we can go back and retrofit a lot of the old buildings, but having buildings that are autonomous, that learn for themselves. Part of my challenge is I don't have enough people to go around and manually do things. But why do I need to do that if, in fact, the technology is out there to be able to do that? And so what I told Siemens from our very, very first discussion is I need a one-stop shop. I need an organization that can do everything. I'm gonna tie my boiler systems and HVAC systems and you know lighting systems, uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing. I wanna tie all of these things together. When I asked that question, Siemens answered to me definitively, yes, we can do that. It's an enviable position for, for me to be in, to have an enterprise that broad that I can ask them anything about anything. And there's somebody in that organization that knows something, has some expertise about it. And so every time I throw out a new idea, they're prepared to throw new people at, you know, chasing that idea. Preventative maintenance is the greatest expense for a college campus. We have buildings that are 50, 60 years old. They're running on a lot of old systems. So it's a $30 million project. Siemens comes in, puts in all these new systems, dashboards and everything to monitor our energy utilization. And then Siemens actually gets paid based on the savings that we realize there's no way I could have done that and no way the institution gets to where it wants to get to without that kind of intervention and commitment by that partner saying, hey, we'll put some skin in the game with you on this. The building and the environment, it's not an insignificant piece to the equation. It's very, very instrumental, fundamental, and the backdrop is it's relatively seamless. You know, and people don't come in every day and say, hey, you know, it's a great building. But, you know, were you to ask that question, they would tell you how important, critically important, the environment they have to work in uh, is to them being successful as they are. Siemens, ingenuity for life.